uh, YouTube, sorry for the shaky, but we're off tripod. Uh, UPS just stopped by. In fact, it was funny. I was making a video when they stopped by. And thank you, UPS. In fact, uh, the, the box was laying on this side, and I noticed that stuff had come loose. So I'm expecting damage. Uh, I took all the labels off. But uh, based on you know how some stuff has been munched, look at that. That's just been sheared off, I think. Maybe that's where the forklift stabbed it. Who knows? Another wonderful corner. Another munch. So yeah, I'm kind of expecting some damage. Eyes wide open. All right. Let me go get some toolings. All right, so I'll go around the top first. Not a little scratched up, but would have been nice if it, uh, I don't know where that actually, oh, I'm going to guess. It's not a monster. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna cut the camera because getting the bolts shouldn't be difficult now that we can see them. There is come in from the top right here, and then come in from the side right there, and then lift it back soon. All right, YouTubers, we have this puppy in the house now, in its home. Have not read the instructions, at least in this book. Read some other instructions. We're in the off position. We're all the way turned down. This is down. You can actually hear the on-off for that. Uh, this is not an emergency shutoff. This is, this is, you would think it is, but there's nothing in there. And I'll get close-ups later. Um... There is on. Nothing is lighting up. Maybe that's because we haven't selected. Uh... Actually, you know what? We'll test this too, because maybe now there there's nothing there that pushes. All right, we're gonna go forward, and we're going to. Ooh, we have nothing. Nada. Maybe our uh, ladies on the UPS truck were a little Press too brutal. Press what? Press and hold. Press and hold, huh? Yeah. It's a good thing we didn't take the whole car crate apart in case it has to go back. We were going to take this off, see if that makes a difference. No. Maybe filming made all the difference. Should have turned it on before we filmed.
Well, now it is time to bust out the manual and maybe put one of these fuses to use. Back uh, later. All right, so the manual that came with it in this little package with two fuses is the exact same manual that I printed and have been following. Uh, and it really doesn't say anything about troubleshooting. Uh, it doesn't even mention the, the fuse. Uh, none of the troubleshooting talks about if it won't start. So um, the fuse looked good, but we're going to pull that fuse back out and try this, the, one of these fuses and see if that uh, does the trick. All right, YouTube, we are in business. Uh, I was going to say, let me let me put this away, but for whatever reason, it doesn't want to uh, doesn't want to lock. We'll leave that alone. That high end case. A little bit of oil on my hands. So uh, we did some troubleshooting, and it turns out that the problem was we were following directions. All right, so this manual is the exact same as the paper, small paper, uh, only these are laminate, so uh, the oil won't get all over them. But I will read you the instructions for operating. Operation. Uh, emergency button, on-off switch. The, main, the, the machine is switched on and off with the on and off button. That's the green and red. To start, lift the cover and press the on button. So I've lifted the cover. I have pressed the on button. Changeover switch. After the machine is switched on, turn the switch to F. For counterclockwise spindle rotation forward, turn the switch to R. So either one, and we're all the way at zero with the uh, spindle, spindle speed. So that is the extent of the operating instructions. Now watch, I will turn it to R. We have nothing. We have nothing. Nothing works. So, they had the instructions in the wrong order. These switches don't work unless a forward or reverse operation is selected. So we're going to switch it to F. Once I switch it to F, the on button has an audible click now. And we have our speed lit up. And apparently there is no zero. <laughs> At least right now I don't have zero. So uh, I go to 126 all the way up to not quite 2500. And I did oil, uh, excuse me, I did uh, grease the metal wheels. So you're not hearing anything from the wheels. It's all the actual, so we're going to call that 2,500. We'll round up. But we don't get a zero. We tap out at 126, so maybe that's some troubleshooting. This does work. So that's the same as the emergency off and on. So I'd have to turn it back on again. Again, I don't have, maybe I'll call them to find out, you know, why I don't have a zero on an RPM when it's set to zero, uh, which is uh, obviously not the greatest thing, but uh, we're in a better spot than we were. And again, uh, the way it moves, everything seems, you know, functioning to some degree. This is actually operating now. So things are, they're working. And uh, that's that. So uh, I will be looking at uh, a number of uh, things to replace uh, or add. The first thing is getting rid of this tool post and going with something that's uh, a little little easier uh, to deal with. Obviously I have to go through everything to uh, see what is or isn't working correctly. Um, I think not everything is what it seems. So uh, it's there. Machinist 101, hobby, uh, hobby machining uh, beginning the journey. So uh, definitely more to come. Take care. Hey YouTubers, Reloading Bench back with you for I'll call this the wrap-up 
of the unboxing and uh, some clarification on uh, my dumbassity and uh, what I've discovered in the first few hours of ownership and tinkering and finding out that the directions aren't exactly what they would seem to be in terms of uh, steps. Uh, so as you saw in a previous segment, got everything working. And uh, first thing I'm going to do, because this did not come with any cutting tools, this particular set, where some sets do, this one did not. Uh, this came with a tray, so I guess I got the tray and not the cutting tools. Uh, uh, but this was purchased specifically this particular configuration for my needs or what I think my needs are going to be. So um, tool post, first thing to go. But what I wanted to say was I've watched a lot of other videos and uh, stuff to watch out for and heads up and, you know, this and that. And I got to say, you know, even down to the littlest things like the screw holes. I mean, there was one video I watched where there was like multiple screw holes for where every, where every panel was. The panels didn't line up. Uh, they were damaged. And, you know, you, there's little things. Uh, but all in all, this thing came really, really nice. And when I show you, uh, I'll probably insert it right about here. Uh, I happened to be in the garage when I heard the UPS truck because that... That sound is uh, very uh, distinguishable when they throw that back door up. And when I came out of the house and saw the two UPS folks, uh, I could see that the wooden crate for this was actually on its side. Um, the, the two wooden feet for the bottom of the crate were actually facing uh, towards the UPS uh, folk. <laughs> And I, I knew right then, I'm like, oh, my heart sank because that means it wasn't right side up. So who knows what's inside and what's jumping around and, and being damaged. And you saw the box, the crate, the wood box, the damage, the, the side sustained and whatnot. <clears throat> I think the, the worst damage was like one little scratch on this and, you know, some minor paint stuff. And that's uh, more because of where things happen to be uh, setting in the box as it was transported. Uh, along with uh, you know the tail stock and uh, and such, so uh, things were uh, you know they were in the box and they moved around a little, not trash, not crash, not 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 you know what I would call bad, but uh, in in looking at older videos and seeing what people complain about in terms of the slop with the with the with the slide and um, uh, the, I'm I'm just not getting it. Now obviously there's play. Uh, whether depending on which screw it is or which gear it is, but uh, uh, the, the the lead screw, uh, very everything is very very smooth, all things considered. Um, uh, even down to the tailstock when the tailstock is locked in, you know it's uh, it's it, you know, I, I don't have any complaints. So you know I was telling my son maybe maybe I lucked out and I got a decent one, but. Uh, Here's where things take a, uh, a, a turn for good. Uh, so because of the, you know, the RPM issue where, hey, when I turn it on, it immediately jumps or settles to like 126. And why doesn't it go to zero like, uh, like the number says? And then I think we saw all the way to the top. I think it tops out at like 2480 something. So close enough to 2500. Uh, and uh, I, quite honestly, I don't know that any of you are turning anything at, you know, 120 RPMs. But uh, for those who have ragged on uh, Vibor, Vever support, I got to say, so I went on their website and I was going to open a, uh, an inquiry in terms of, you know, why does, why does my lathe uh, not, not begin at zero when it's all the way turned down to zero? And uh, as I was starting to fill out the form, I noticed, oh, they have a chat, and it says 7 by 24. So uh, I started a chat, and uh, I got, I'll just say Carlos. So this is uh, a, a, and what was really cool was, you know, after chatting with this guy, uh, he had emailed me the entire chat uh, transcript. Uh, I blacked out uh, my uh, my email, but the point was, uh, as soon as he said, yeah, what's your uh, order number? I said, well, where do I get the order number? Because, uh, you know, he gave me a format of an order number, which did not match the Amazon. 
and he said, oh, uh, if you ordered from Amazon, uh, uh, it goes through a different support channel because I'm, I'm going to guess that Amazon sells a significant numbers of these as opposed to maybe uh, Vivor Direct. No, I'm just guessing. Uh, but uh, we've informed our Amazon colleagues to contact and solve your problems. Our, co our company has a special Amazon customer service department. They will take care of you of your problems. Our specialist team will contact you at this email, which is an email that I gave him, uh, and they will send you an email in the next 24 hours. And I said, okay, thanks. Uh, and then, like five minutes later, he emailed me the total transcript of our conversation. So I thought, that's, you know, from a process point of view, that's kind of cool. Um, and then I started poking around on my own, and the light bulb went bling, and I realized, wow, I'm a dumbass. Uh, and I say that because when I looked over the specs, the Amazon specs of what I bought, uh, so this is the version of what I bought, uh, I did not pay $7.29, so I had a coupon where it takes $40 off, so it was in the 600s. But continuously variable, uh, continuously variable features spindle that can turn in both forward and reverse directions with a 150 to 2500 RPM continuously variable speed range. So this lathe is doing exactly what it's supposed to do that... Obviously, I missed that, and in unboxing and seeing the zero, assuming it would be at zero, thought it should be at zero. So um, my customer support to Carlos slash Amazon is no longer needed because um, it's supposed to be 150 to 2500. Now, uh, it's lower than 150, and it's not quite 2500, 2480 something. Again, that is all kinds of good for what uh, I think I may need to do as I head down this beginning newbie wannabe machinist space. But uh, I got to say, I'm beyond pleasantly surprised at everything. Um, you know, I checked the, the lead screw with when, it, when you click it into automate, it works. Everything works uh, at its initial level. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not fooling myself. I have no clue what I'm doing yet. But in terms of the gotchas on what people have talked about and the slops and the and the slides i mean there's nothing there's no movement there um and it's you know i gotta pick up some uh, ways oil but it's it's smooth i mean i'm i'm very very impressed with uh you know how this operates uh i i truly am i'm i'm uh i'm caught off guard i was expecting damage and uh kind of crappy functionality and it's pretty Rock solid. This thing was oily as all. You can see, oily as all heck. Uh, this will not never get used. Uh, so I will look for one of the first things, uh, the upgrades I'm looking for. I don't know if I'll go with a kit from like Little Machine Shop that has, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, the chuck. You know, do I need some of the rests? Probably not. Uh, but a good deal in terms of what you get uh, cheaper than buying parts individually. Uh, by buying them in uh, uh, not so much bulk, but in uh, in a set. So uh, we'll see what we're going to do. But uh, I just want to say I'm I'm uh, I'm caught off guard at how surprised I was. Uh, again, I was expecting damage from the way I saw the package or the box sitting in the UPS truck. Uh, in fact, when when you see them walking up the driveway, they're even carrying it on its side, uh, and then they put it down correctly probably for the first time since it had been on the truck. So who knows how it was bouncing around. But, uh, you know, hey, um, I'm quite surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised. And uh, I wanted to, uh, I guess, counter some of the naysayers out there that have done nothing but rag on these mini lathes. Uh, maybe they're getting better. I mean, this, uh, again, with all metal gears, uh, this is a direct drive brushless motor as opposed to, you know, a belt-driven with brushes, uh, so maybe maybe the newer stuff, uh, the MX series versus the, uh, I think it was called the Max uh, before this, uh, maybe they're at a point where, you know, even with the, um, the mass production of uh, less than wonderful castings for some of the bigger names, um, you know, the, the, the pieces that I got, uh, I'm pretty happy with so far. Uh, again, I'm no no machinist, so uh, this is uh, this is a beginning journey. I'll call this the equivalent of uh, instead of uh, buying a uh, an Apex reloading 
press. Um, this is a Lee, and uh, I have a lot of Lee, and I like Lee, so that's by no means a bash, uh, but it's a starting point for learning. So uh, really surprised. Uh, I think the first thing I'm going to do uh, is bolt the lathe to the tray and then let it set on the mat as opposed to bolting it all the way through the table, and we'll see how that works. Uh, we'll take it in steps, but uh, yeah, really beyond pleasantly surprised. Uh, everything works, the cutoff, um, you know, nothing was damaged in terms of, wow, it's, you know, uh, super trashed and something needs to be replaced. Uh, it's doing what it says it was going to do and how it was advertised. So uh, quite honestly, you know, can I say I couldn't be happier? You know, I don't, I don't want to say that's not possible, but I, I noticed even these have little... Uh, uh, little guards, plastic guards to clear away uh, any chips that, you know, push away like a snowplow, chips that might be in the way to get under the uh, uh, under the slide. So uh, nice attention to detail. Yeah, I'm surprised. So uh, caught off guard and uh, looks like uh, maybe I lucked out and got a good one. So uh, definitely more to come. Uh, we'll be mixing these in, uh, maybe a little centric on this right now just because uh, it's got my attention and focus. But uh, very cool. Talk to you.